Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are we doing? It's Russell here from Porky's Corner. It's a Wednesday afternoon and the weather's freezing here in Rotherham. Today I'm joined by Michael, Michael. Yep. from uh, London. How are you doing Michael? Over to you. Yeah, I'm fine thanks. How you been Russell? I'm alright mate, I'm uh, plodding on. I've just put my Fred West jumper on because it's getting a bit chilly. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> are you, um... uh, let's turn this heater off because it makes a noise when I'm filming. Right, go on. You were saying? I was saying, have you watched any of the boxing recently? Um, I, I wasn't impressed by the quality of the fights. Of the weekend. Yeah, you've had the Canelo show. You had the Frank Warren show. You had um, Al Heyman show. Yeah, I thought a lot of them, uh, as you've probably seen on my videos that I did with. Uh, the gentleman at the weekends, uh, I thought the whole lot of them was utter pish. That's what I thought, Michael. Terrible, terrible. As I, as I've said before, this is the problem. With, this is the problem with the sport. It seems to be going downhill instead of the fights getting better. Okay, I'll give you an example. But you look at someone like Tommy Fury. You know, you fought someone with nine losses, and now you're calling out Jake Paul. Which, obviously, I, you know, I don't understand. Where's your ambition? Don't you want to become a fighter? Don't you want to become a world champion? Mm. You know, but right now, you've you got Tommy Fury on, on BT, and all you've got going for you is the fact you're Tyson Fury's brother. You know, but you to me, you haven't shown me anything. You haven't fought anybody. And it's like, you know, your, your brother's a celebrity. Your dad's a celebrity. But can you fight? And, you, you know, you've got, you got Campbell Hatton on Sky Sports. It's like all these fighters, it's like these days, it's more important uh, It's more important to be a celebrity. Who's, who's your dad? Who's your brother? Who's your, you know, they'll give you opportunities based on that. But say, say, you're, not, say you're not related to someone famous. Say you're not someone who's got, who can talk and who can act stupid. They're not going to give you the opportunities you deserve. Do you feel that you wouldn't get your opportunities in boxing because you weren't related to somebody or somebody's offspring? Oh, definitely. But I think it was a couple of things. Uh, I'm, I'm a lot, I don't mean this in arrogant sense, but I'm a lot brighter than most fighters. What I mean is, I'm, I'm 30 years old now. I was different back then. I wasn't, I think the main thing in fighting, you've got to be able to, in boxing, you've got to be able to fight. Now, I was different back then. So if, if I give you one example, someone like O'Hara Davies, as I'm, I'm older than him, but him and me started off with all about even. Now I'm I'm not I'm not someone who lies about things, but he he overtook me because he he was he was more aggressive than me, he was more he, he took boxing seriously. So whereas at first I could sort of hold my own, and like I say he's like two years younger, he overtook me. Now, I was different back then. I wasn't as dedicated to boxing as I am now, um, and yeah I'm I'm not I'm not trying to mention myself in the same league as a horror. Um, but all, all I need to do right now, I need to just, um, it's, it's funny though, like last year I joined Repton Boxing Club and I was going to start having fights, but then next thing you know, the lockdowns happened. Um, but yeah, but I think for me at the time, I, I thought I didn't really see myself going far in boxing, which is why I sort of decided to stay, take a step back. Yeah. But a lot of these pro fighters you see, um, all right, let's just say Tasha Jonas, um, but she's not getting the opportunities. Uh, we all saw her beat uh, Terry Harper and wh where has she gone since They've, she's had no fights since she's not progressing yeah. and it's like if you're not having fights you're not really going to progress because you can train as much as you like but it's not the same as someone fighting you so I, I, a lot of fighters they don't get these opportunities if they're not connected I mean well, a quick example you can't say take Tasha Jonas versus uh, Shannon Courtney Tasha is obviously a lot better Shannon Courtney's the one that gets she gets treated as if she, as as if she's something special. You know, you, you haven't achieved what Tasha Jonas has achieved. I mean, that was the best women's fight last year, Tasha Jonas versus Terry Harper. To ring where's the rematch? To ring magazine. Yeah. Mate, I, I love that fight. It was a good fight, but where's the rematch? Yeah. Yeah, I see where you're coming from. And it were 10 two minute rounds and it were a good fight. You took a clash of style, Southpaw pressure fighter against a runner, an orthodox runner, who doesn't engage and runs clock down. 
And she beat her up, didn't she? Jonas beat Arthur up. Well, it's like, that's just the thing. She didn't, Terry Harper didn't really want to know. I mean, look, I'm, I'm not, I was like, these are all things I say to their face. Um, but I'm not, I'm not going to be harsh on fighters. I just think you're going to run into someone that gives you problems. And I think Tasha Jonas is a difficult fight for Terry Harper. She beat her. But now, now none of them want the fight. You know, Steffi Ball, none of them. Because, you know, they, they know that in their hearts, they know Tasha Jonas is a dangerous fight. So I, I, they're just, they're just. I mean, they're going quiet on her. They also have a good example. But a lot of fighters, they pick and choose who they want to fight. Uh, take the other day, Canelo versus Yildirim. I, I'm not going to blame Canelo. It's not really his fault. But a lot of these sanctioning bodies, but why are you putting fights like that on? Yildirim was never going to win. Well, he hasn't won in, what, two years? Yeah. And I think he got stopped by Eubank. Well, he's not going to beat Canelo, is he? No, well, even now you got Billy Joe Saunders versus Canelo. Yes, yeah, so it's going to be a fight I really want to see, but I, I don't think Billy can really beat him. I mean, you know, you Billy's boxed Martin Murray, and you're going to take on someone who's been boxing the best in the world. You know, look look what Canelo did to Callum Smith. Callum yeah. Smith could barely get a shot in. So Billy's not going to win, but it'll be fun to watch. Yeah, it's. Uh... It's exciting times ahead, Michael. This is why we love this sport so much, Johnny. Sizzling. Added spice. <laughs> Compelling. The... Rough, tough, rugged. What's the other one he says? Ad Adam's, what, what that other thing that I always come out with? Adam Smith, Mr. Bean, he's the only man. That can, that can make boxing so it can talk about boxing and make it sound like a, an ISA, you know, those body shots are going to pay dividends later on in in the bank, Matt. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, I know yeah, these guys... Go on, sorry. Uh, sorry. I'm going to say, uh, and the ad, as for the added spice and sizzling, it makes it sound like a Jamie Oliver cooking lesson, doesn't it? <laughs> well, this... This guy should be fired because look, he's not good at his job. <laughs> and I, I mean, to me, Adam Smith's got an ego because you're jumping on every broadcast. You're, you're putting yourself in the camera all the time. Yeah. And then you're picking and choosing your mates. You're picking and choosing the people you like. To um, I think from what I know of Sky Sports, a lot of these people, obviously you know this better than me, but a lot of these people, they know each other. They're mates. You're picking and choosing your mates. Like, take someone like Ingram Jones. I've known him. I haven't spoken to him about a couple of years now. He's He's gone all quiet. But me and Ingram Jones used to hang out a lot. And we used to talk about it. And the thing with Sky Sports, they pick and choose the people they're hanging out with. But then that's that's corruption. That's, that's favoritism. Because you're not picking the person that's best for the job. And you take Anna, someone like Anna Warhouse. Yeah, but let's be honest. Yeah, you've picked her because... Obviously, I guess she she she's get, she gets on with Barney Francis, or she's his girlfriend, or whatever. <laughs> oh, and I, I say it to their face, I'm like, but that's not what she knows about boxing. You could feel it on the back of a stamp. So I was like, why don't you give the job to people like Jane Couch or Tasha Jonas? Or I'm not saying you have to be a fighter, but give it to someone who knows boxing. But you're just picking your mates. You know when it came out about Anna Woolhouse when she had uh, she was walking around saying. Clicking the fingers, remove him from this uh, press conference. Does she have Tyon Booth removed from uh, some uh, Sky yeah. function or press conference or whatever? Tyon Booth turned up and she had him removed by uh, Clifton Mitchell's security, didn't she? Because she's, well, in my opinion, it's security. And I don't know Tyon Booth. I think I only met him once, but I think what, what the guy wasn't doing no wrong. I'm not going to defend him. Obviously, he's dug her out on his channel, but she was like, well, if you put yourself out there, you have to be shot at, don't you? You have to take the rough with the smooth on social media. And I thought to do that, she was trying to show authority on look, look at power I've got here. I didn't like that. Uh, even if it was just normal Joe Blog, say for anybody digging her out on the channel, she, who's she to get anybody removed? She doesn't own Sky. She doesn't own Matrium. She's an employee of Sky. That's it. But look, I was actually at that press conference. I, I'm, I never saw what happened. Were it near London Bridge? 
Um, it was it was the Dylan White Rebus. Uh, where was it? I think it was near Canary Wharf, actually. Yeah, that's it, Canary Wharf, near London Bridge. It's London, isn't it? Yeah, go on, yeah. Yeah. But I was there. I, I didn't see any of this, but um, Tyen he, told me he about it. He didn't do no wrong, did he? He just turned up, didn't he? She went straight on him. I remove him. He uh, said that I send off blowjob signals uh, on Twitter or something. Something like that. She told one of them uh, big meetings who worked for Clifton Mitchell. And they, they, had him, they had him removed, didn't they? So, yeah. Know, but, just... but that's what I'm saying. That this is this the power. These people are power. They've they've gone crazy. The power has gone to their heads because. But as a, who is she though? Like that's it to her face. All you've got going for you is that you're Barney Francis' girlfriend or Barney has got a crush on you or, I'll keep my language clean. But it's like you, you're you're talking it like you're acting as if you're someone special. You're not. You don't know what you know about boxing compared to someone like Russell or Terry or Tyron. Like you could feel in the back of a stamp, and yeah. to just oh, I'm gonna kick him out of the who are you though? You know, all right. I, I think it's the arrogance, yeah. Moving on then from the adventures of Tintin, uh, <laughs> Billy Joe, in, uh, is him, is him and Canelo gonna fight in May, or is Billy gonna go off at rails and do something stupid leading up to the fight? Yes or no? Is the contract even signed? I don't know if it's signed or not. Um, I think the fight will happen. I, I don't. I think Billy. I think Billy Joe Saunders is a stupid person. Um, you know, I've been around him before. I've seen what he's like. But I don't think you can't be that stupid after the amount of things you've done. Like you've you've got you've only got a few months to go. You'd have to be mentally retarded to risk losing the Canelo fight. I, I think his team will probably tell him just sh shut the hell up. Stay in the gym and just get the payday. I, I don't. He can't be that stupid, or, or maybe he is. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, I hope that uh, he gets his head down and fights Canelo and gets Mark Mark Mark, Mark Tibbs a few quid out of the job because Mark, what Mark Tibbs did for Dylan White, I thought was fantastic. They went eleven and zero, and he got him to WBC mandatory, and he got him a, a British title. And I, I hope that Mark gets a few quid out of the job because you know he's had he's had a, uh, a, a, a in in uh, indifferent twelve months, should we say, eighteen months indifferent. Uh, I met Canelo a favourite in the fight. Can Billy Joe uh, spring a surprise? Well, I don't think he knocks Canelo out. It might be a close fight. He might lose by two or three rounds. I don't know, but. Let's hope that they just get in the ring and fight. Because until then, in my head, I can't accept that it's going to happen until I see them in the ring. And that includes after the weigh-in. Even if they weigh in, I still won't believe it until, until they're in the ring. That's very perceptive. What do you think, Michael, about that? You're right. I mean, anything's possible. He might he might come, come out with something stupid or... Yeah, anything. You're right. First, I don't, I don't see any way Billy can win, but um, you never know. He might do something to get out of the fight, and oh, surely he's not that stupid. I think I've been around Mark Tibbs. I think Mark Tibbs is a very classy person. I think Mark Tibbs is going to talk some sense into his head. You know, just just get the fight out of the way, get it done, get paid, and move on with your life. I mean, this is Billy Joe Saunders. Uh, who knows what he might do. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about Tyson Fury, Joshua? Is that going to happen? No, not this year. No. Oh. Well, look, I, I saw Tyson. Um, I went to his gym last November. And um, I, I, I remember when the fight, I went there in November. The, they were supposed to fight December. The fight got cancelled. But um, it's not, it, it didn't really strike me as... Um, I don't know, I just, it didn't seem, I don't see the fight happening. Because especially, right, then you've got the thing where if you saw, um, if you see how much weight he's put on, well, think about it. He hasn't boxed in how, since what, last February. You expect me to believe that he's going to get in with Joshua. And he's, he, need, he needs a fight. Like, I mean, you saw him get in the water. He's, we all saw how fat he is. I don't see, he's not going to fight Joshua. Fat as a big Michelin man. I mean, he's not, he's not stupid, yeah, fat, fat as a Michelin man. And I don't see the fight happening this year. Well, he, he needs a fight. We're now, in, we're now in March. 
by the time he's had a fight and got himself back into condition, we're going to be coming to October, November, December. And then it's probably going to be too late because that's a sum of... But look, I don't see it happening this year. Not with the amount of egos and Al Heyman getting involved. I don't see it happening. Okay, so what happened? Um, you remember when they said last year, the entire Tyson Fury say, uh, thank you, Dan the man, Daniel Kinahan, thank you for getting the fight. So, what happened? Like, come on. Like, that's what I'm saying. I'm not interested. All this back and forth. Man, I've got things to do. I work. I've got my... Just, just tell me when the fight's on. But even yeah. if the fight's on, as you said, I still won't believe you until they actually get in the ring. I mean, someone will get injured or Wilder will sue somebody. Just just tell me the week of the fight. I'm, I'm not interested. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not making any money from the fight. So why would I care? I mean, you've got your life. I've got... Yeah, yeah so... Yeah. I've got you. You've got your say. I've got, you've got your life. You've got me all life, yeah. Uh, what do you think to... Uh... Josh Taylor fighting, is it Ramirez? Ramirez. Ramirez. That's, That's a good, good fight. fight. Yeah, it's a good fight, like, yeah. He's doing um, well with Josh Taylor, hasn't he? Yeah, you know, he's developed so much. Um, you know, I first sort of watched him. I remember when he fought Harvard Davies. Um, and yeah, I, I knew Harvard Davies is probably going to lose. Um, Josh Taylor just had too much experience at the time. And he's, he's come a long way. He's developed. Um I remember he, he knocked some guy out of a body shot recently, which a bit of a mismatch. But I think Ramirez is a tough fight. You know, he's going to come to win. And, you know, we're going to see what Josh Taylor can do. But um, I, I think Josh Taylor's the favourite. He's likelier to win. Um, what, what do you think of the fight, Russell? I think Josh Taylor knocks him out. I'm a big Josh Taylor fan. Uh, three years ago, I did a video saying he knocks Mikey Garcia out. And everybody said that. So everybody said that me... Uh, my cheese has slipped off my cracker, but uh, I just think that he's a good fighter. I think he's an elite fighter. There's, you could say him and Fury and Saunders are the last three undefeated elite fighters that we've got in this country. Yeah, true. Uh, everybody else has been licked, haven't they? Been beat. Yes. They're the last. And if Saunders loses to Canelo, there's just Tyson and Taylor left, isn't there then? Yeah. I'm going to ask you about Ben Davidson. Uh, what do you think about him training Josh Taylor? Do you think he's too young, too inexperienced, or what? What, what do you think, Michael? I don't, I don't think age is an issue. Um, is he too inexperienced? Yeah, probably. Because, because um, well, I'm not being harsh on him, but I think I said this to you about Adam Booth. I was saying this before. Adam Booth! Go to Adam Booth! He's the best. Well, I'm sorry. That's right. That's right. But um, I remember I said this before before Josh Kelly lost the fight. But I was saying I think Bruce an overrated trainer. I think he's a decent trainer. But a lot of trainers, you're only as good as the talent that you've got. Yeah. So uh, let's just say me. Uh, I'm an excellent. I'm a very good talker. So if you put me on a top table, I'm a good public speaker. Someone like Katie Taylor, she's not. You know, some people can talk, some can't. You is not fight. a talker, is he? Savannah Marshall's not a talker. Callum Johnson in, Beefy Smith in. Is this what Callum Smith in? Is these why these kids don't get as many opportunities as other people? Although Callum Smith's had his opportunities, I'm Beefy, but they, but as soon as they got beat, they, 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 they sort of went quiet around and the offers, don't they? See where I'm coming from? But that's why these are the people I want to see, but. We talked about this earlier. You get opportunities based on being a celebrity or being based on being an idiot. Like, I, who's, who, who do I... Uh, let me try and think for a second. All right. You look at Lomachenko. Lomachenko's an excellent fight. He doesn't talk. But all, to me, all you need to do is fight. Say someone like Savannah Marshall. Do I care whether Savannah Marshall talks or not? Not really. I don't need to hear you talk. Just fight. You're supposed to be a fighter. Like, if I go to a restaurant, or if I'm going to go get a suit tailored, all I need is for you to give me the service, the job, you know? Like, if you, if you go to a restaurant, you might say, hi, hello, how are you? But that's it. You're not you, yeah. you're not going to sit there talking. So this is the thing with boxers. It's like they're forcing them to become these, you know, these social media stars. But you need, you need to just promote the actual fighters that can fight. And, 
So what, I, what we said about Booth and um, Ben Davidson, you're only as good as the talent you work with. And someone like Ben Davidson, well, you can't really say he's trained anyone because by the time you've got Fury, yeah. Yeah, but you've already got the product that's already made. All you had to do was get him fit. And Josh Taylor, but that's another, these guys were world-class before they came to you. So I'm not, I'm not saying Ben Davidson can't train anyone, but we haven't seen him achieve anything. You know, I've said it to his face, I'm not being harsh, but a lot of no. fighters, they think, you know, they think you can go to a trainer, all the trainer can do, they can work with the, what they've got. If you go to Abel Sanchez, he's not going to turn you into Golovkin. Yeah, he, he can make you a better fighter, but they can only work with what they have. Do you feel no. that Ben Davidson only got Josh Taylor, Billy Joe and Tyson Fury because Ben Davidson is MTK's head trainer and they're all MTK fighters, world champions. Do you think that's why these world champions went to Ben? 100%. But Tyson Fury and Billy Joe left him, didn't they? Yeah, they must have something, they must have realised he's not really that good and they changed their minds. Do you feel that if Josh Taylor maybe wins his next fight but doesn't perform how he should, or if he loses his fight, do you think Ben Davis will cop it in here? Probably, because fight, you know fighters. Fighters are very reactionary. They're very impulsive. They'll, they'll blame the trainer. Do you feel that Ben Davidson is one for the future as regards a great trainer? Probably not, no. No? Why not? He's only young. I'm not being... I'm just... I could be wrong, and I'm not... I'm a pretty articulate guy. I'll say it to anybody's face. I'm not... I can't say he won't. I, I can't... But my prediction... But I mean, the guys, you know, you're old enough. You have, you've never done it. You haven't done anything yet. I'm not saying you can't do something, but I haven't seen you train someone from scratch. So it's, it's like Tommy Fury. I can't say he can't fight, but from what I've seen, you haven't shown me anything. Yeah. Do you feel that Tommy Fury is being put in a situation where they're going to pad his record out, not take any risks with him? But tell everybody he's a novice, this is a novice, that he's got to be given time. But all along behind the scenes, they're trying to manoeuvre him into a fight with Jake Paul for big money. Yeah, that's what they're trying to do. But I, I don't, Jake Paul's not going to fight him. But, um, I, but you know, this thing in boxing, uh, they say, oh, this guy's a novice, this guy's a novice. Yeah. If I go to a restaurant and the food doesn't taste good, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to appreciate that. So don't don't say to me, the chef, the chef is a novice. The chef is a well. Oh, don't flip him. Don't put him out. Don't put him to work then. So when you say these fighters are novices, uh, but that's a stupid. Uh, I'm not. I'm not asking Tommy Fury to fight Anthony Yard in his next fight, but you're fighting people that have had nine losses and no wins. Fight someone that's had four or five wins. Fight someone that's decent that's going to fight back. But don't don't insult my intelligence because you're putting him. Who are you going to put him in with next? What, someone with 100 losses, 200? What, is he going to fight Robin Deacon next? Why don't he fight Elvis Doob? <laughs> yes. Or dig or Elvis Doob Char or, or Willie Warburton. Or fight Charlie Zelenoff. Charlie Zelenoff. Yeah. Again, uh, but you're not... Ross, yeah, go on. No, I'm just saying, but it's not, it's, not even, it's not a dig against any of these people on a personal level. But the way the boxing system is, it's just they're letting them get away with this. And... If you like, if you think I'm gonna pay for this nonsense, like you're deluded. I don't. I'm not paying for any of these fights. I mean, it's just gone garbage. Like, I'm not paying All for right. any of this. All right. What do you think about Callum Johnson leaving Eddie Hearn to go to Bricktop? Um. Well, you just got to do what you got to do. You know, if if Eddie's not offering him opportunities, then um, you you got to go go to where you can find opportunities. Yeah. But I think Callum Johnson's a good fighter. I want to see him against. Um, uh, I want to see him against Yard, Buatzi, these kind of guys. But I, I think he can he can beat these guys. You know, yeah. so. Um, yeah. A lot of these guys they're rushed. You know, like Yard and Buatzi. You know, you, I can see a lot of flaws in them, especially Yard. So um, yeah. I, I hope Callum Johnson gets some opportunities. How far would you say uh, Tommy Fury is away from fighting for a British title? 
that is very far. But you're not, you're fighting. I'll give you an example. When you watch some of his highlights, so what he does, he, char- he charges at these guys. And these guys, are all, if you, they, just, they just stand there. And he, he, he'll, he'll hit them with 10, 12 punch combinations. But these guys, they can't even, they're not even looking. They can't see the punches coming. They're not throwing back. Yeah, but any, any, anybody, can, anybody can look good. If, if you're not, if the opponent's not throwing back, you don't meet. So I just, I don't think Tommy Fury is any good. I think once someone hits him back, he's going to get a reality check. What's up, Eli? I'll give, even like his dad, even John Fury. You know, you remember when you, see, you hear, you, you heard all this stuff. John Fury's this, he's that. And, but then when he got called out by Mickey, you've, you've gone all quiet. You know, I don't, I don't understand. I, I, I got, I actually sparred someone the other day in a park. A friend of mine called me up. Now, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. My friend's quite strong. He's quite, he's a couple of divisions above me. So he called me up. Say, you want to come spar in a park? I said, I don't mind. But I said, you know what? Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I don't really want to take any headshots because you, you're too big for me. So he goes, yeah, no issue. He come down. We, we done it the next day. So what I'm trying to say about John Fury. If you're serious, but you could just make it happen, but you've gone all quiet. You know, if, if you don't want to fight the guy, then just say, I don't want to fight him. You know, like with me, I'll give you a straight answer. If I don't want to fight someone, if I think you're too big or you're too good, I'll say it. But I'm not going to keep, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm a, you know. So it's the same thing with Tommy Fury. Once someone hits you back, we'll see if you're really, we'll see how serious you are. Yeah, do you think uh, all this with John coming out with, I'm best man above 50 in this country. I fight anyone. We're fighting men. We love to fight. You think that's just John trying to create a bit of a persona as a hard man? Yes. I, I, don't, look, I don't mean to be... I'll say it to his face, but you've said all this sort of stuff, and when someone's, when someone's put it on you, you, you where's, now's the time for you to back it up, but you've gone all quiet. You know, I, yeah. I don't... I, What's a good example? It's like I, I, I tell you the truth. I, I know people. I know people that have. Um, I, I, I've got a family member. I know people that have. They'll say things about the police. Oh, I'm not scared of the police and this and that and this and that. I know a situation. I, wit- I witnessed it myself. So basically, the police got called. It had nothing to do with me, but I, I witnessed it. Soon as the police turned up, the guy went quiet. And, for, and this is the same guy that said. If the police are there, I'll still kick off. I'll still. Kick. But when the police actually turned up, he lost his bottle. And, you know, he was trying to talk to them and he was trying to, he completely lost his bottle. So, you know, anybody can talk, but prove it then. Like, you know, if, if I say I can knock, if I said I can knock Mike Tyson out, well, let me go ahead and prove it. Can I do it? Obviously not. If you say something, well, go ahead and prove it. Back it up. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, what do you think next for Lewis Ritson, uh, Michael? Oh, he fought. Um, he didn't he fight the same guy, Harry Davies, uh, Vasquez. Yeah. yeah, I think he lost. The, um, but I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure there's the, people. He for got him. the decision, didn't he? Yeah, but Vasquez, you know, has been robbed twice, and this is the corruption with boxing. Um. I don't know, maybe a Harvard Davies versus Ritson would be a good fight. I was just about to say that, maybe a good fight, that, isn't it? I don't what know, Harvard's Har- 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 gone quiet. I don't know what's happening with him. Um, I want to see, I want to, well, you know, ever since Matching threw him under the bus, I, you know, I, I don't know who he's going to fight now. Um, what about I remember they were trying to. Well, no, I remember they were trying to say he's going to fight Anthony Fowler, but yeah. well, he, can't, he can't beat Fowler. Fowler's too big. What about Anthony Yard, Lyndon Arthur? That's a good fight, isn't it? Rematch. Yeah, well, I didn't mind the fight. Um, yeah, don't mind it. You know, it can happen. But again, Yard and Tunde, they've gone all quiet. So I, I don't know what they're, you know. You think they might not fancy it now? Probably not. But it's just, it's funny. You get like these celebrity trainers and they talk a lot. You know, they're in all the interviews, but then the moment they lose, they disappear for dust, don't they? Yeah. Gone all yeah, quiet now. Yeah. No, but there's no... Sh- well. No, sorry, no, there's, there's no shame in losing, but you, you, you've just got to, uh, you've got to come back from it. You've got to continue with your career and you've got to be mentally strong. 
but a lot of people they don't they're not they lose it breaks them yeah how's your youtube channel coming on michael I was starting to develop, um, base, I was sort of 2010 to 2012. Um, I used to be so different then. I used to go to all the press conferences. I used to interview Eddie Hearn and Adam Smith. And I used to put on these people. But again, I was different then. And when I saw what boxing was becoming, that's the same thing with Ingram Jones. Ingram Jones has walked away from boxing a few times. I looked at the way boxing was going I just thought, you know, I've had enough of boxing because um, uh, I, I actually got banned from Frank Warren press conferences because they right. said I was asking, they said I was asking too many hard questions. Um, like, like what? I, I, I'd ask him. All right, um, I, I asked Frank Warren about Mike Tyson. So he, he was saying he was, he was saying Mike Tyson's a scumbag. So I said to him, well, why? What did, what did he do? I said, um, have you got some sort of issue with Mike Tyson? And yeah, he didn't like that. Um, what other, other question that I've asked them, I just say to them stuff about the fights. I, I don't think this is a good card. And yeah. I'll get, there's, a, there's a few people in boxing that try warning me. Don Charles told me, Peter McDonough told me. They said, if you want to keep getting access, you can't really ask questions that are too challenging. So I said to Don Charles, yeah, but but I, but I that's the job though. Like I'm, I'm, I'm not getting paid for it, but... I'm there to ask challenging questions. And if people don't like it, I just rather not turn up. So Don, Don Charles told me, he said to me, look, you're a kid, you're young enough to be my son. I'm trying to tell you, if you don't, you know, if you don't sort of go easy on the questions, you're not going to get the same opportunities. And I remember I looked him in the face. I said, well, maybe it's not for me then, because I'm, I'm a straight talker. And if, if they don't like me, then forget, forget, forget Frank Warren. But um, I've I've always got on with Matrim. Matrim have never banned me. But again, when people know you're going to ask awkward questions, they they sort of they avoid you, don't they? Um, I've never had any problems with Eddie Hearn because with Eddie, even if you're asking hard questions, he he's a very good talker. He'll blag his way through it. Um, but I, as I just got this illusion back then, but um, I'm I'm going to start doing it again. I'm going to start going to press conferences and. Ask people the hard questions, you know, ask them the challenging questions. Yeah, there's not there's not wrong with that, Michael, is there? Yeah, but again, I was different back then. Um this time I've got more of a, a plan um in terms of what I want to do long term. But you know, I don't want to sort of go off point, but there's so many different things I want to do. Like um well the country I'm from, right now there's a war going on in sort of uh North Ethiopia. So what you know, there's there's different things I want to cover. I want to cover global stuff. I want to cover politics. So boxing is just going to be a part of my life. But um, yeah, you know, I want to get involved. I want to ask. Um, you, uh, you get people like Gareth A. Davies. It's like you're asking silly questions. You're asking people. I don't watch it, but you know, you're asking. So Eddie, what's your favorite flavor of ice cream? Eddie, what what what's your favorite you know Chris, men's? Chris. Yeah, but you're not you're not you're not all right. I don't. I could talk for five hours. I'm a very good talker, but just ask them simple questions. Like, all right, let's just say Fury Joshua. Don't to me. Don't talk about the fight unless it gets made. Don't talk about it. I don't want to hear all this personal stuff. Because, like, you know, right, would you go on camera? Would you talk about personal family stuff? This stuff is just too much. Just keep that stuff to yourself. Sort it out behind closed doors. But you know, you're uh, you're telling us like last year Fury said to us the fight sign, Dan the man. So what happened to that? You know, so people like Gary Fick, you're not asking them these hard questions. So basically somebody's lying. Like, so you've lied. If you're saying Dan the man, all right, so where's the contract? If you're saying the fight was signed last year, um, but again, I can go, it's like, you're not asking, like, take all these people like Coogan and so on. And you've turned it into a celebrity game. You know, it's all about views and, but where's the integrity of boxing? Look at the referees. Look at the, I, I could go, but you're getting these fighters from different countries that are getting robbed. So what's what it's going to do to these fighters? It's going to break their hearts. If you are someone like Terry, um, your friend Terry, obviously Terry's a lot more involved than I am. So imagine you've trained the kids from young. You know, you've trained him for, you know, you've sacrificed your family time and then you take him to the fight and you get robbed. Unless you've got a very strong mind, unless you're very thick-skinned like I am, 
that's going to mentally break you and you're not you're not going to it's going to turn you away from boxing so people like Coogan Cassidy you need to talk about that because when these fires are getting robbed time and time and time again uh, shame for me once shame on me for me twice uh, how, how does it go but these fight is corruption. Like, don't lie to me, because if it's happening again and again and again, it's like if you like, if you if you say you say you keep keep gambling or you keep if you if you can't stop doing something, it's, it's an addiction, you know. And these are sort of questions I want to ask people, you know, about a bit of a rant. <laughs> yeah, there's not wrong with that, Michael. Uh, is there anything you want to add before we bring this to a close, young man? Um, yeah, I might as well be honest. So a bit of a personal thing, but um, I've been gambling recently on sort of football and boxing. But um, yeah, I've had to give the gambling a knock on the head. It's just I keep losing. I lose more than I win. Um, and it's just something I think people should be aware of in life. You know, you need to sort of work on your weaknesses, and um, you got to uh, you know just work hard. You know, you shouldn't gamble. You know. Uh, yeah, I just thought I'd share that. <laughs> yeah, uh, how old are you now, Michael? 30, yeah? So you're living yeah. in London, you're 30. Uh, have you got a woman yet? No, nah, happily single, mate. Happily single. Go on, lad. Uh, all right, then. So you're 30. What would you say to the Michael, if you bumped into yourself when you were 18, what would you say to him now, 12 years later? Oh, I would have definitely said uh, just... I should have just stuck it out. I should have dedicated myself to um, boxing. I should have had fights, you know. Um, I, I, was, I was such a different person. And then um, well, I remember like Tunde Ajayi once, I used to train with him. He told me, you know, he said, oh, you haven't got the talent. And this. so I got put off by people. But, um, I wasn't as mentally strong then as I am now. So yeah, I would have just told myself, dedicate yourself to boxing. Yeah. All right, then. Well, listen, I hope everything works out for you, Michael, down there in, in London. And I hope you, whatever you're doing with your YouTube, and I wish you all the best from my heart, mate, because you're, you're a nice kid. You've stayed at my house. You're, you're respectful. And uh, I wish you all the best. All right, my friend? Thanks. And um, you'll hear from me soon. I, so I've got a white qualifier in April. Yeah. And um once the gyms are open again, uh, I can go to Repton. I've joined them, so I can start having some fights. Um, start ripping shit up, can't you? Yeah, and the lo last thing I'll say, I think a lot of fighters, they talk too much about stuff outside of boxing, but if you want to be taken seriously as a fighter, yeah. it's what you do in fights that matters. You know, yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what you do in sparring, it doesn't matter who you're related to. Can you fight? I'm a very good talker. That's not you've got to be able to fight. Once someone yeah. punches you in the face, are you willing to fight back? Yeah. All right, so well, we'll see how it goes. Have you got a nickname for what you're gonna call yourself in April on this white collar fight on license thing? What what what's your what's your name gonna be? No, I just stick to my real name. Like year, years ago, I used to go by the sort of nickname Apollo Jackson because it was very catchy. But um yeah, it was a bit of a silly idea. I think just just be yourself. Just Wait, stick what, to the. What's, what's your name going to be? Boxing name then. Michael James Andermeskel, which is my yeah my real name. <laughs> well, that's real catchy, that Michael. <laughs> well, my my channel's called Emperor Michael, so I think that's quite catchy. Yeah, why don't you call yourself Michael the Emperor? Uh, I might do, or just Emperor Michael. Bring, bring back the days of Caesar and, you know, Augustus. <laughs> yeah. Do you smoke weed? Never even tried. Because you're quite deep, aren't you, mate? Well, I mean, I read a lot of books. I read, um... <laughs> been reading a bit of Shakespeare recently. Um, but you, you just take life a day at a time. You know, I think treat your body with respect and, you know, you don't... I don't want to put alcohol or uh, drugs or weed into my body. Why? It's not going to be... Weed's from me. the earth, man! Weed is from the earth! I've heard that. But I just... I don't I don't see the benefit in smoking weed. Uh, oh. Do you ever smoke weed yourself? You know I do. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, listen, on that note, I'm going to get off. So, listen, you take care. Keep on trucking, keep sporting boxing. What's your Twitter handle or your Instagram? 
they're both Emperor Michael. Emperor Michael. Well, that's yeah. Emperor Michael. And what's your YouTube? Emperor Michael. Emperor Michael. Get and follow this kid. He's going places. All right. <laughs> Peace out. Keep on trucking, Michael. Good luck with that. Keep supporting boxing. It's a fantastic sport. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment on this channel as well. Porky's Corner. We're definitely going places. Peace out.